When I was doing any grafting, I was hydrating that graft with gentamicin. I was hiding it with antibiotic. Uh, I do that with every single case. I still do. Uh, I'm a worry wart <clears throat> about everything. If I can knock off that one extra percentage of implant failures, I'm going to do it. So I hydrate my, all my grafts with gentamicin, 3% uh, liquid, or I do metronidazole of 5%. I'll put a half cc to one cc inside a graft, and I put the graft in. If I have PRF, I'll also mix some of the liquid inside that graft. Uh, after I'm done with my implant placement and incisions, and I close up, a lot of the time I'll put this gel. Uh, it's like this blue colored gel that you guys saw, a few of you did, and I paint it along the entire ridge, and it's metronidazole. The gel is metronidazole. So not only did I put uh, antibiotic in the graft, I put PRF over the incision site, and then I also <laughs> added an antibiotic on the ridge, right? And like, how, how could that get infected, right? Like, oh my gosh, like, what are the chances of something like that get infected? There's so many false safes between every single step of the way that we're, we're doing here. Like something for the bone, something for the tissue factors and growth and everything for the incision to hi uh, heal up without any bacteria leakage. And then we have at the end, we're killing any bacteria that are on top of the ridge. I, I feel so much better about that. I use that gel for a lot of stuff. I use it for anything full arch. Now I paint it on and then I put the prosthetic on and it just sits like that. Um, I do it for anything that if you have a tissue sloughing, if you do, if you lose a membrane from a graft, right? And you're worried about that graft becoming infected, you just give the patient that little syringe, have them topically apply it twice a day. That will keep the entire graft from getting infected while it granulates over. Um, you can do the same thing with an incision opening. So this one is really big. If you have an incision opening and you place a cover screw, it opens up. You place this antibiotic on the incision opening, you will not get an infection over it. But a lot of times what happens, and you'll see all those cases on Facebook, someone posted, hey, I placed this implant, incision opened up, and then they have pus coming out, right? We have all seen those types of cases. This is the most frequent thing with cover screws. Incision opens, bacterial leakage, bone loss around it, is once that the once the tissue opens, biology now attacks that implant because it's going to remodel down to the biological width, right? That's why the suturing is so important. The PR, PRF is so important because if you have or the periosteal release is so important to get really really passive closure, right? Because as soon as that opens, biology freaking attacks that thing, and it's going to cause probably two millimeters of bone loss around the top of that implant because it's exposed, right? It's looking for ways to control its environment. So what I recommend is if you use this type of antibiotic gel, you won't get that type of infection. It'll granulate over. So you won't lose the implant, you won't lose bone around the top of it. So I'm a huge advocate of it. I started using it about a year and a half to two years ago now. Um, and I do it for anything that I'm worried about. Like it could be even your diabetic patient or you know, if you place a number nine on a lady who uh, is a reporter for the news, right? <laughs> or something you like really don't want to fail is what I use that for. That one is from Stephen Wallace. He's a periodontist. This is where I get that from. So if anyone wants more info on that, I'll include it on the, the packet at the end. But it's just a really useful tool, an adjunct tool that I found over the years that I started using.